Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on my personal vehicle here, my daily driver. Uh, it's a 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500 half ton. Uh, it's full drive. It's LT model uh, Z71. Uh, got a check engine light on. It's come on and come and gone here the last couple months. Haven't really paid any attention to it, but the uh, drivability has gotten worse. So uh, brought it in through the scan tool on a couple days ago. Figured out what was what was going on and everything. Uh, ordered some parts, uh, but I'm gonna plug the scan tool back in here and uh, show you guys what the what the codes are and uh, do some little diagnostic work with the scan tool and show you guys what I found and uh, what we need to replace. So get this thing uh, get all set situated here and. We'll bring you back when we get the scan tool fired up and start uh, doing some scanning on it. Hang on. All right, y'all. Uh, got y'all set up in here. Uh, hopefully it's bright enough and stuff you can see with the screen lit here. And go ahead and uh, we'll manually select because this thing won't auto ID because it's on that uh, edge of the uh, years and stuff that it'll auto ID. So. Uh, 2000 Chevrolet. I've got the Silverado and its cave in. It's an LS model, 5.3. And we're going to read. Oh, I don't want to read them all because I know there's no, uh, no codes in the, all the other modules. Go back, read select. We're just going to read the PCM because that's where it's at. It's in the engine. Now, communication issue. Love technology. PCM. Let's try that again. Helps you have the key on. Alright guys. Yeah, it helps if you have the key on. Uh, my stupidity. Now let's see if it'll do it. Ah, communication error. Huh. Alright, well, we're just gonna do a full read then. So, we'll bring you back whenever this thing, because it takes a few minutes for it to read all the modules, so we'll bring you back whenever uh, we get it all scanned. Alright guys, I had to back all the way back out, because originally I didn't have the key on when I was doing all this. So, you have to have the key on so it can talk to the modules. So, let's do this again. 2000 Chevrolet. Silverado LS 5.3 Now, let's see if we can read just the PCM. This might make an interesting video if, uh, if this thing won't read. Yep, she's going to read this time because she's taking longer. There we go. All right. Current codes is what we're worried about. Fuel trim system. Lean bank one, lean bank two. Uh, history codes is the heated oxygen sensor for bank one, sensor two. And the fuel level sensor, high circuit. Um, I know about that. Uh, when it gets down below a quarter tank, it starts going wonky. Uh, no big deal. I'll clear that one out. And the mass air flow air mass airflow sensor, which is a history code, I set that one. Uh, doing some testing, unplugging it and running it, uh, so it just stored that code. But these are the two we're worried about here, and we're more worried about this bank too because we'll go back out here and we will get some live data going. 
and I'll show you why. Uh, it does not have the air pump. And the symptom on this thing is, is after it runs and goes into a closed loop and uh, the computer actually takes over the, the uh, fuel delivery system, uh, it's not running on a you know, set uh, thing. We're going to go into fuel trim here. Uh, after it sits and idles for a bit, it'll actually flood out and stall the truck out. So I know from experience basically what's going on and we're not worried about the fuel trims we just want the O2 sensors where did the O2 sensors go uh, O2 sensor bank one or bank two sensor two bank two sensor one bank one sensor one and two and we're gonna apply and we're gonna start the truck up and uh, Okay, uh, if you guys can read these here, uh, these are millivolts. Anything from 100 and below, it's con considered in a lean condition. Anything from, uh, I think it's 600 and above, is a rich condition. Anything in between the two is uh, good. We've got uh, just at the engine off, uh, bank two sensor one. 2, 250, somewhere right in there. Uh, bank 1 sensor 2 is uh, 350, something like that. Bank 1 sensor 1, two, 250. So those are matching. Bank 2 sensor 2, 35 millivolts. So it's saying it's super lean. So let's start the truck up, and these numbers should start fluctuating pretty good. And uh, we'll show you what's going on here. All right, see how we went a little rich there? Of course, on the startup, we will. See, we're leveling out there. Good voltages. That bank two sensor two is basically dead. It's saying that we got a super lean condition on that bank. That's the bank that we're having the, the main lean issue on. Uh, so it's trying to compensate by adding fuel to that cylinder, that set of that side of the engine and it's way flooding it out so we even rev it up here a little bit and I'll show you you know so yeah bank one looks good you know it's it's operating away in you know around where it should in my opinion uh, but this bank two sensor two nope she's no good she no good so there we go we'll get this uh, we'll get the truck up in the air and we'll get the uh, show you where the O2 sensors at on that side and we'll uh, start replacing it bring you back all right y'all we're over here uh, bank two is always the right side of the vehicle, uh, at least on the GMs and stuff. I believe Fords too, but definitely for the GMs. Uh, and right here's our heated oxygen sensor for number two sensor. It's uh, after the catalytic converter, which is up there. Of course, it's pretty dark up there. You guys can't see it, but it's where the right before where the two sides come together. It's right here. Real simple to get to. Uh, won't need a specialty socket or anything to get on it and the connectors are right up here and I've already checked the wiring harness and everything there's no no issues with the wiring harness up there so uh, let me grab some wrenches and stuff and uh, we'll get that twisted out of there bring you right back all right guys got my wrench here just a seven eighths this simple super simple there we go little twist there there's a safety clip you gotta pull out of this one uh, actually let me go get a pop tool and we'll pop that out of there and then we'll take it apart all right give you guys a little better angle this is a connector we're working on here I'm just gonna pop it up out of the frame that way I can 
can get to the wires a little better. Bring that down out of here. Here's that little safety tool or safety clip I was talking about. Let's pop that out. Lift up and unplug. There you go. Easy peasy. Now, if you're using the socket and stuff on these, I have in the past just cut the wires off here, put a socket on there and ran it out. But this one here seems like it's pretty pretty uh, loose. Well, not loose, but uh, gonna be pretty easy to get out of here. Sometimes these things are buggers. Get out, you have to heat, heat the bung up. You know, break it loose if it's rusted in. Uh, these have been changed, I think, once before. Uh, I think they use cheap ones. When you're doing these O2 sensors, guys, get the OEM. Don't, don't cheap out. I know they're expensive, but put an OE, o, or a non-OEM in there, and more than likely, down the road, not too long, you're going to be replacing it. So... Yep, there you go. There's your oxygen sensor. Um, I'll grab the other one off the workbench and uh, show you what the part number and stuff is for this one uh, and what brand it is. We'll bring you right back. All right, guys. Here's the, uh, should I get the glare off air? This is a Densco. Uh, there's the part number, if you guys can read it. I'm trying to you can dim the light down there a little bit. If you guys can read that, uh, that's the part number for it. Uh, like I said, this is the Bank 2 Sensor 2. Uh, so, get it out of the box here and out of the bag. Be careful with these guys. Don't be banging them around, dropping them and everything else. They're, you know, don't carry them around in your pocket for a day or two before you put them in. Outside the box, you know, outside the bag and stuff. So. There we go. I know this one looks, I mean, they look, they look identical. Um, it's just, you know, this one was probably a off-brand one. Now in the kit, I don't know, they have it in the camera? I don't know. Yeah, see they look, they look the same, you know, but, you know, this one here is probably some generic one. So, uh, in the kit, in the box comes with some copper anti seize use it uh, don't use regular anti seize use the copper stuff it's high temp and it doesn't take a whole lot you know don't get it down in the sensor area this will just help the next guy out you know or you later down the road you know like I said don't don't take very much now, reach up in there, easily slide it back in, get it threaded straight, started straight in the hole. Hopefully, now you guys can't really see the, the hole and stuff, but it's up there. Now I'm gonna throw this up through the frame. Get it straightened out so it just spins nice. Mother hand up in hand. There we go. Got a hand tight. And then all you gotta do, give her a little oomph off here. No ugga dug a gun. Alright, there we go. There's that. We'll bring our wires on the outside of the frame here. Line up the little tabs, plug it in, make sure it's in good and tight, make sure that clips down good. Stick our little safety back through the hole, which, there we are. Now she's popped in. Little safety keeper there back through the hole. 
and push this back down just like that that's all there is to it guys make sure your wires you know run your route your wires so they're not you know not up by the exhaust and everything so all right let's get back in the truck let this thing oh let's get let this thing down get back in the truck and we'll fire up the scan tool and see if this made any difference all right guys we got the truck down back down on the ground uh getting ready to hook the scan tool and everything or hook, turn the scan tool and everything back on but uh a uh, little pro tip before you before we get started on that when you're uh switching from video underneath the vehicle and you got the camera stuck to the underside and you got the camera turned upside down and you can bring it in here and you set it up on the uh on the console make sure you flip the camera over you know everything looks kind of funky whenever it's upside down so just a little pro tip there for you so anyways let's uh select the vehicle we're going to manually select and same as before 2000 Chevrolet Silverado LS 5 liter and we're going to read select ones we're going to do the PCM let's do that I don't know why I just did that because uh, we already know what the codes are so let this thing run here we'll get back out of here We wanted to go to the data stream. See? I'm not thinking here. Things are just going haywire. Yep, see? See? All the same. Okay, data stream. That's better. PCM for the data stream. Continue. No air pump. And go down here to fuel trim data. We want to customize that list. Go to the heated oxygen sensors. Oxygen sensor, oxygen sensor, oxygen sensor, oxygen sensor. All right. All right. That's all we need. We're gonna apply. Let's see where we're at. Now let's start this sucker up. Let's see if that changes any. There we go. See that uh, that sensor's the sensor's a lot better now. That bank too. Still a little on the low side. But I think I might know what uh, I think I might know what that problem is with that. We're still still saying it's running lean. But I got a I got an exhaust leak right past right up to the manifold on that side. All right, y'all, there you have it. That's uh, changing an oxygen sensor on a 2000 Chevy Silverado. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, trim, the uh, fuel trims were still a little skew on there, but uh, I did check. Uh, that exhaust leak over there is, is fairly decent. Uh, we may be having an issue with the cat on that side too. Uh, I'll have to check for, uh, get that exhaust leak fixed and then check the, make sure the flow on the cat's good. Uh, but the, you did see the numbers did in, did improve. Uh, still wanted them up over 100, but they're not up over 100. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna get that exhaust leak fixed and then uh, check her again. I may make a video on checking that or fixing that exhaust. I may send it out. Uh, depends on what time, how much time I got here. Uh, I'm gonna throw her back up in the air and see uh, see how bad them bolts and stuff are and see if I got enough time to actually drop it and get them get them out of there or if I just want to send it out uh, not that I don't have ability just it's time everything everything's time time is money so anyways <coughs> sorry about that appreciate you all stopping by and checking out this video I uh, hope you all learned something or you know got a good idea what what it takes to change an O2 sensor on a 2000 Chevy Silverado 
appreciate y'all watching uh, stopping by if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button ring the bell get all the notifications we do stuff like this we do small engine work we do fabricating tractor pulling I even threw a little bit of cooking here and there you know um, okay cooking but you know might enjoy it so and that uh, you know as always y'all if you weren't watching them I wouldn't be making them appreciate it catch you all in the next one bye